Today we're gonna find out how accurate is the Apple Watch, the Aura Ring, the Whoop, my Garmin, my Aid Sleep compared to a real sleep study test that I did at home. This video is sponsored by Shopify, but more on them later. Now these are the results from my sleep study, but to really understand how we got these results, what they actually mean, I think it's important to understand what the test is and what each of these like sleep stages that we always hear about actually mean. So first the test that I did, it's called a polysomnography or PSG, which most consider as the gold standard for sleep tests. Testing. In a polysomnography, there are five different stages, which is awake, N1, N2, N3, and the N1, 2, and 3 are non-REM and REM sleep. So a PSG is typically multiple things. One is the EEG, which goes around and measures your brain waves. Two is an ECG or EKG, depending on where you are, which is your chest and abdomen, and that's usually measuring your heart. Three is an EOG, which is measuring your face and kind of eye movement. Four is an EMG, which can be your chin and your legs, so leg movement, jaw movement. And five is SpO2, which which is typically measured on your finger. So when I got the test done, I had this unit around my chest, I had some things around my forehead and my cheeks, I had something on my leg and on my finger. You can typically do this test at home or inside of a sleep lab. Obviously, if you do it at home, you might feel more comfortable and you might get different results. Whereas at a sleep lab, if you're nervous, that could impact the results a little bit. Now that's the hardware side of it. So how do you actually get the sleep stage data? The next piece is a method or a philosophy in terms of how to decide which sleep stage you're in. There are these experts and technicians that manually will look at this raw data and then decide what sleep stage you're in. And the current rule is that they use 30 second epics. And what that means is they're looking at a 30 second block of time and from that deciding which sleep stage that you're in and then they'll do the next 30 seconds from there. What's super fascinating is when you give a PSG recording to two different technicians, sometimes it can be like an 85 to 90% difference between what these two technicians pick. So that's where it gets really hard to be like, okay, this is what your actual sleep stages are, even when it goes from the expert level all the way down to a consumer wearable device. And the 30 second epics also change it because now you're taking blocks of time and saying, all right, this 30 seconds is awake. These 30 seconds is REM. Maybe within that 30 seconds, 49% was awake and 51% was REM. And now it's just been all REM. The one with more percentage in that 30 second epic wins. You might have actually more REM, even though there was a ton of little bits of light sleep that was actually missed. If you have any kind of sleep disorder, the variation from what technicians pick and even wearables do pick gets even greater. I think the CDC estimates that there's like 70 million people with sleep disorders in the United States. And most of these people might not know that they have it. And when we start to put so much emphasis on our sleep tracking sleep stages, PSG down to wearables are gonna have a harder time deciding which sleep stage you're in if you have a sleep disorder. That's a very important point to keep in mind. So a train score has taken 30 second epics, categorized them in these four sleep stages, and now you get this data, what does it mean? So here we're on the NIH government website and you can see there are three stages of non-REM sleep, stage one, stage two, and stage three. On most wearables, stage one and stage two kind of get merged and they call it light sleep or core sleep on the Apple Watch. And then most wearables will call stage three as deep sleep or slow wave sleep. Next, we have REM sleep, REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement. And I think most often we associate light sleep with unnecessary sleep, but it actually is important and it helps you feel well rested. Deep sleep with kind of like body recovery, growth hormone, anti-inflammatory, physical recovery of your body and brain. And then REM sleep can, can sometimes be associated with like dreams and recovery of your mind. Typically deep sleep or N3 will happen in the earlier half of your night and then REM sleep will typically happen in the second half of your night. So one thing I have found is if I do wake up early on multiple nights in a row and I kind of lose out on REM sleep, if I sleep in on like, let's say Saturday and I woke up super early the, the entire week, I have crazy dreams that Saturday. I don't know if that happens to anyone else. And the Sleep Foundation has this really cool graphic. Our sleep is not gonna be, oh, it's all deep and then it's all REM and then it's all light. We go between these phases. Typically you'll have four to six cycles of REM sleep. You'll have some cycles of deep sleep and it kind of fluctuates between those and, and light sleep as well. These sleep tests and labs cost a lot of money and they wouldn't be possible without sponsors like Shopify. I actually want to start selling my own sleep masks, weighted blankets, and blackout curtains very soon. And I'm planning to sell these on Shopify because of three main reasons. One, I'll be able to reach you. I can sell on all the main social media platforms like YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest. Two, Shopify makes it super easy because I can start my store with a simple drag and drop editor. They have easy to use marketing tools and a back office that oversees all your operations. Three, it doesn't stop there. Shopify has a new set of AI enabled Shopify magic tools. If you didn't know back in high school, I used to sell a lot of products online and I could never get a really good photo of the product. But now I can easily transform my mediocre photography with AI. Let's say for example, these are the new blackout curtains I'm gonna be selling in my store, but my house is really boring. I import the photo, I click on the product background replacement tool and I'll type my description. Bam, look at that, they're all sold out. To learn more about Shopify or to start your own store, click the link in my description or go to shopify.com backslash Shervin to get a free trial today. Thank you Shopify for sponsoring this video.
video. Now back to measuring some sleep stuff. Now that we understand how a PSG works, we understand what sleep stages are, how do the wearables that we're comparing against the quote unquote gold standard, how do they work? And one of my favorite devices is the Apple Watch. Almost all of these wearable devices are going to use an accelerometer, which measures movement in all three axes, in an X, in a Y and a Z axis. They have PPG sensors, which use lights like the green and the red kind of LEDs that you see. Some of them are actually also infrared to measure things like your heart, your respiratory rates, heart rate, heart rate variability. And then some of the more advanced ones will have a skin temperature sensor as well. Apple has this really good PDF where they explain how they estimate sleep stages from an Apple Watch. And the thing is to keep in mind is they're estimating sleep stages using the types of sensors I just mentioned. I love that they kind of reassure us that sleep stages and the kind of concept that we've created around sleep tracking is created by the AASM, the CDC, and the AHA. So they're not just like creating this thing because everyone else is just doing it. And then they talk about how the PSG is the gold standard. Essentially, they've created an algorithm where they took a study of hundreds of people of different colors, sizes, body weights, ages. They try to take the PSG data to estimate what sleep stage they might be in with Apple Watch hardware and software. And I love how they go in here and they talk once again about the sleep stages. They use the word core instead of light sleep, which is the merger of N1 and N2 that we mentioned before. Apple's sleep staging algorithm was based on at home testing, as you can see that they mentioned here. Um, they mentioned all the number of nights and they had a ton of people in this research study. So that is reassuring with a wide variety of ages and skin colors. It was mainly white 75%, which not ideal as someone who might not be white, but they did have some black, Asian and Hispanic folks as well. So it's better that it's not 100% white, I guess, but I would love to see that number be more balanced throughout. From the study, they had one set where they trained the algorithm and another set where they validated it. And Apple themselves in this paper, PDF, whatever you want to call it, they actually did show how well were they able to validate the data against it. How much can you trust each sleep stage in your Apple Watch? And this is at a large scale. We'll get into my data soon. So we can see that from a basic level, the darker the blue, the higher the number, the better. And we can see that core sleep and REM sleep were typically the best. Wake was slightly worse and deep was the worst. Sometimes deep sleep would be mixed up with core sleep and sometimes wake sleep was mixed with core sleep as well. So keeping in mind, your deep sleep might accidentally be scored as core sleep on your Apple Watch, even though you're actually in deep sleep. That's kind of interesting. I just keep that in mind when you're looking at these sleep stages. And then Apple goes on to talk about how it's great to understand this data and information and you can use it to better understand how your habits and lifestyle behaviors impact your sleep which i think is important and at the same time making sure that because you might see a small leap in your deep sleep one night not to attribute that one specific thing to that small percentage in deep sleep because it could just be a mix-up in the algorithm too take everything with a grain of salt as i always say now that we understand a psg we understand the sleep stages and we understand how apple watch and most wearables do their sleep staging based on their algorithms what were my scores based on the sleep study that I did. So let's pull up this Google sheet. I did a sleep study for two nights. I used a company called Absolute Rest, which I can also have linked below if you want to use them. I had an at-home PSG, and then I was also still wearing my Apple Watch, my Aura, my Whoop, my Garmin Epix Gen 2, and my 8 Sleep Pod 3. And I tried to pull as much data as I could from these devices. I had the most up-to-date software on all these devices at that time. So on the first night, December 13th, 2024, my total sleep time on the PSG was seven hours and 39 minutes. And as you can see, most of the other devices, like the Apple Watch, 10 minutes off, the Aura Ring, maybe an hour off. Uh, the Whoop, very close. The Garmin, decently close. And the 8 Sleep, decently close. So maybe almost up to an hour off on some of these devices. And you can see on the second night, maybe some of them were really close on the first night, but then the second night, you know, it's just a variable of one. The Apple Watch was much farther off. The Aura Ring was still about an hour off. The Whoop also was much farther off. I think I was laying in bed a lot more and just scrolling on this night. And these devices kind of thought I was sleeping because I just wasn't moving as much and maybe I was in a very calm state. And now if we look at heart rate, which is resting heart rate, and I took the average resting heart rate for that night, we can see from the device I was using compared to pretty much every other wearable that were within a few beats per minute, like 61, the Apple Watch was probably the closest. If we go to night two, it looks like the Aura and Whoop were the closest Apple Watch not too far off. One thing I did also include in this is like sleep score and recovery readiness. I know a lot of people ask like, oh, what's the Whoop and the Aura difference? As you can see, 93%, 100%, 85, 55. So sometimes the Whoop and the Aura can give drastically different scores. Even if we go to the previous night, I'm getting an 80% readiness, 65%, sleep score 78 and 98. So the Whoop and Aura were drastically different both nights on these sleep tracking nights. They're kind of in this order. The Apple Watch, the Aura, and the Whoop were closest to the PSG in most scenarios, and the Garmin and the 8 Sleep fell a little bit more behind than the other devices. But let's look at some more of the data. And you can review this, you can pause this if you want. The start end times were either the start end time of the actual PSG test or the start end time of the sleep that the wearable decided and chose for me. The next piece is the actual sleep stages. We can see what the PSG got. Gave me awake, REM, and then N1, N2, N3. I merged N1 and 2 to get total 
light sleep or core sleep to be able to compare with everything else. If we look at my REM sleep, it gave me two hours and 40 minutes and there was no other device that was even close. For some reason, they all were very similar within a one hour 40, but the PSG gave me almost an hour more of REM sleep, which is very interesting. For N1 and N2, it gave me almost four hours and 20 minutes. The closest was probably the Apple Watch and the Whoop, whereas the Aura and the Garmin were pretty far off. The H sleep doesn't give you light sleep in their app, but I probably could have figured it out. And then lastly, it was deep sleep. It gave me an hour and 40 minutes. And the closest was probably the Whoop and the Garmin at this time, whereas for some reason, the Apple Watch was way off and the H sleep was also pretty far off too. But how does it compare with night two? So REM sleep, an hour, 17 minutes way off again. We got a light sleep, somewhat close. Looks like the Garmin was the closest at five hours and three minutes, almost spot on. And then maybe the Whoop and the Apple Watch with the Aura being very far off. And then lastly, deep sleep, an hour and 17 minutes. It looked like the Apple Watch was the closest this time and the H sleep was pretty close as well. Whereas the other three were pretty far off. Now I'm not looking and comparing the actual charts throughout the night of how they actually categorize each of the sleep stages, but it's just the total for these categories. Cause most people, when you pull up your app, you're probably gonna look at the total time. You're like, oh, I got this much deep sleep. And then you're gonna compare it with your friend oh, I got this much deep sleep. But now if you look at this data, you can see how much different all these major players can be. And that's where I always go back to sleep stages. You know, it can be interesting. It's kind of cool to look at, can be valuable. But the most important variables for me that I personally look at is my resting heart rate throughout the night, HRV, just seeing the trend over time. I don't compare that with other people as well. I use skin temperature to see if I'm getting ill or when you drink alcohol, that can also go up sometimes. Respiratory rate also can notify me if I'm getting ill or just not getting enough sleep. And the second component is if I feel like I might have a sleep disorder, based on some of this data, then I would probably go get a sleep test. I did get one and I don't have sleep apnea, but it is likely that I have restless leg syndrome and a couple other things. So I'm working on a video around that. Subscribe and turn on notifications if you wanna see that. The biggest thing that I've learned overall from all this testing is that the data is useless unless you make a lifestyle or behavior change. It is very interesting and can feed your curiosity, but if you don't have a reason and how that's gonna change your behavior, don't look at the data, don't use it. This is all cool though, have fun with it. Follow me on Instagram, Strava, Twitter, X, at Shervin Shares to see more of this content. And I wanna thank Shopify for sponsoring this video. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.